What's going on guys, one more thing to bring on a brand new episode of Washington Station, the best station for Washington Football Nation. Now today I'm going to be doing a preview for Sunday's matchup against the Cleveland Browns. I hope what I say in this doesn't end up like last week and totally bite me in the butt, but we'll see. Alright, so we got our hands full this week. Um, don't, don't underestimate Cleveland, yes they're kind of a team that doesn't exactly know who they want to be or what they want to be. <clears throat> They're trying different things offensively, defensively, just got to get that chemistry right. But don't count that chemistry getting going in this week because they've had a had a long week to prepare. So we'll see how how this game goes. But, um, yeah, so I say the big thing to watch is Baker Mayfield, you know, how does he play? Does he go off like he played last Thursday night, or does he play like we kind of seen? Like kind of like there's something there, but it's just it's not like it's not coming through. I think that's a very big possibility. Um, it's a ton of possibility. This is Cle That's the way. That's the thing about the Cleveland Browns this year is they're a team that should be good. They're a team that. I mean, except for this week, I want them to do good. I want them to do good. Um, I like their players. I like their coach. I'm a big fan of Kevin Stefanski, um, Baker Mayfield. Um, but they have crazy talent on their team. It's just, can they gel together and make a consistent run? And that's up to us as the Washington football team to make sure they do not get a consistent run. So what's it going to take? Our defense has to stay up. Kyler Murray is much faster than Baker is, but nonetheless, Baker can get out the pocket and run if he needs to, if the line gives him enough time to. That's one thing we have in a big advantage. The Browns' O line is not very good, and we have, what is it, 11 sacks? Yeah, we have 11 sacks in the season so far in two weeks, so we can dismantle that offensive line if we want to. Um,. So that should be it. We should get a lot of pressure. Um, the running backs are a big factor. You have Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Nonetheless, whatever you feel about Kareem Hunt, you can't neglect the fact that he has freaking monster talent. He has talent that is crazy good. He can get through anything. And Nick Chubb is, I mean, amazing standout player. Knew he was going to be once he got drafted. Um, and that dynamic duo they have is very reminiscent of what we've it's very reminiscent of what we had last year for a short time with Adrian Peterson and Darius Geis. So a lot of our defense should be used at least practicing against them when they would do first team reps last year. Unless it's a whole different scheme, but the idea of watching for that two back formation, um, seeing you know one could be running, one could be blocking. They could both be going out for routes. You know one could be an option where you don't hand it to one, hand it to the other. It could be a bunch of different things. Um, and that's only one element of the offense. Another element is the receivers. I think they have Callaway, don't they? Maybe they have Callaway. But for sure, they have Njoku, Njoku, Austin Hooper, Jarvis Landry, and Odell Beckham. Those names should scare the absolute crap out of any team that faces up against them. But for some reason, it doesn't. It really, it, it doesn't really, um, scare me too much because the chemistry just hasn't been there. Um, it's starting to heat up with um, Odell, the one Austin Hooper still looks like he's going to go in, and Joku just haven't heard his name called a lot, and Landry, you know, he can, he's good, he can come out some place. Odell knows our team, like player-wise. Well, not really, actually, no, he doesn't. He messes with people, I mean, he doesn't. But he's familiar with playing our team, so this will be a drive in him to beat us that he has naturally. It's kind of like when you say you're a Washington football team player, no matter where you go, you're always going to want to beat Dallas. I mean, you see Sean McVay, how good he gets when he beats Dallas as a Rams coach because he has that drive that he's had since he was Washington offensive coordinator. You never lose, you never lose that feeling of um, distaste or just pure fire against another team. You never lose it. I mean, today, if somebody mentioned name on a high school rival, we know that feeling of, oh, man. Those guys, you know, it, all, it comes back immediately. Um, so we're going to have our hands full with Darby. We might, maybe we'll have Fuller back this week. I haven't heard much of him on his progression or regression. Um, uh, Darby's got to get better. 
Koyaki's got to stay with his man, not let him run by him and this or chase him. He's got to chase him down the whole play. Uh, Landon Collins just got to uh, make sure all the communications happen correctly. And that's not only on him, that's also on John Bostic. Got to make sure communication's all right. Got to make sure if, you're pull, if somebody's having to get on somebody else for coverage, they know because there were many times in the Arizona game where they were kind of like, oh, you want me to get him? Oh, I know you want me to go against him. A lot of those moments, we can't have those moments if we want a successful game. Um, d has just got a wreck. Um, Kerrigan's had a little bit of some of the toe injury. Uh, if he can't go, it's not the worst thing, but I'm sure he'll fight to a toe injury. I think he's there just being precautious this week. Um, I think he'll go, but like I said, he's not going to get all the snaps because you got Chishon, Montez, Duran, Matt, Johnson. And so all of them are going to be um, getting the reps throughout the game. And don't forget about Tim Settle. I feel like his name kind of gets left out of the conversation. He's been such a factor in these games, so you cannot count him out in any situation, obviously. Um, linebackers, um, probably not going to have Holcomb this week. We may, but I don't think so. Um, Thomas Davis is dealing with an illness. We'll see if he can go. Um, and linebackers just got to fly around a bit more. You know, Sean Deon Hamilton has got to come up a little bit. And uh, Kevin Pierre Lewis has to keep that same consistency that he had in the second half of the game against Arizona. He needs to come back here and replicate it. It has all one side of the ball. And I'm going to talk briefly because my videos this week have already said what needs to happen for offense. So I'm going to just rehash what I said if you missed any episodes. And if you did, make sure you go back and watch them. Um, all these videos kind of work as a series. You kind of need to see the last one to understand what I'm talking about in this one for some aspects. Um, I want to catch up. Um, Dwayne has got to be consistent on his throws. Um, that's also not only on him, that's also on the O-line. They have to give him time to make those throws. You can't put on Dwayne saying, oh, he's got to make those throws. Yes, he has to make those throws, but he also has to have the time to set his feet. Now that he's not setting his feet, well, is he having time? He's trying to get rid of it so he doesn't get sacked or fumble it. Because he does have a fumbling issue. But that's not only on him. That's the line not blocking correctly. And he's having like, crap, what do I got to do? I'm going to try to throw it. Oh, the ball got knocked out of my hand. He can't. When that ball is extended, when that hand's like that, you only have but so much grip on the football. You only have but so much grip on the football at that point. Um, tight ends have got to pick up Logan Thomas. He has got to make those catches. If the ball is catchable, he's got to come down with it. No excuses of too high, too low, just a little above him. You know, none of those. Or he really has to go up and get it. If his hand can get on it, he can catch it. That's how I put it. Receiver, you have two rules. If you can, if your hands get on it, either you catch it or you make sure nobody else catches it. If there's a possible chance of an interception, you knock that thing out. I preach that any time I've been on this topic since Pierre Garçon tipped that pass in week 17 in 2016 where he tipped it, got intercepted and sealed the game where we didn't make the playoffs that year. I was devastated after that and since I've been like, you know, if you had a chance to get your hand on the ball, either catch it or if you know you're not gonna catch it, make sure nobody else catches it. So don't tip it in the air. If you're gonna do it, tip it or just keep batting it down. And sometimes when you try to bat it down, it will actually kind of fall back into the red basket. So, you know, just keep, you gotta keep that awareness going. You can't be like, oh no, I got it. Oh no, it's intercepted. Oh no, it's tip it, bubble, smack it to the ground, and maybe, possibly, it will actually fall right back into the red basket. Um, running backs, Antonio Gibson's gotta keep that fire that he has. Payne Barber, Jay McKissick just need to keep doing their job. Um, Terry McCord needs to keep balling out. Steven Sims needs to get some more um, action. That's not on him, that's on the play calling and doing. Um, I might see Gandy Golden get some red zone looks. I think he'd be a big factor because he's so big. Um, he's so much taller than a cornerback, so you could throw, throw which would be half or normal receiver, but for Gandy Golden, probably be like just in his range, and you could get a good catch. So the offense just needs to get more consistent. You need to play the second half, like the whole game, like to do in like the second half or fourth quarter in his past two games. 
Defense just needs to stay steady, just need to keep doing what they're doing, just make adjustments, make sure everybody knows what their assignment is. And I see us winning. I, I said that two weeks, this is the second week in a row, and the last time it didn't work out, but I'm cool with us winning. Hope you have a great day. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed. Make sure to comment down below your thoughts. And make sure to hit that bell button right beside the subscribe button so you're notified every single time I upload a brand new video. Hope you have a great day. Stay safe. Have a good weekend. Make sure to watch Washington football Sunday. And uh, have a great day. I'm Will Morris. You're watching Washington Station. And I'm out. Peace.